in the infrastructure bill itself, there's some $52.5 billion in funding to all states for roads, bridges, highway infrastructure. I believe some $5.3 billion of that is coming to Massachusetts for highways and roads. What are some of the key ways that states can spend that money specifically? So this is really about making sure that we have the kind of safe, efficient roads that are going to power our economy for the next 50 years. Uh, we've been hard at work from the moment that the president signed the bill here in this department to start getting those dollars out the door. I can tell you that Massachusetts share just next year, just on the roads piece alone, is over $800 million. And we know that the State Department will be able to put those dollars to work on everything from uh, uh, just uh, fixing things that have needed fixing for a long time. Uh, to improving road networks. Uh, this is everything from highways that go across states to uh, uh, sometimes dollars that can be used to enhance safety or uh, walkability or usability on city streetscapes and everything in between. Uh, you know, everybody knows that our roads need a lot of work in Massachusetts and around the country. Now we have a whole new level of resources to do that with, and we're going to be working very closely with state and local leaders to get it done. So I know some of this money should be put toward improving climate resiliency. And I know in the Build Back Better agenda, even more money, billions of dollars more was going to be earmarked for, for climate change and, and working towards making things more climate resilient. If that agenda does not move forward and the infrastructure bill only has really a sliver of what's needed in this area, how else can the government step up? Is there any other plan to fill that gap? Well, transportation is the single biggest contributor of greenhouse gases in the U.S. economy. So we know that good transportation policy can be a huge part of the solution when it comes to climate. And we're working on that right now. With the bill that's already been passed, for example, we have the biggest investment we've ever made as a federal government in transit. That's important because every time uh, somebody has the option of a, a great, fast, reliable uh, transit uh, uh, opportunity to get to work or get to where they need to be, that means they're freed from having to uh, take a, a two-ton piece of metal with them, a car, to, to where they're going. Uh, when we are able to uh, help people make their trips cleaner, uh, when you do have a car, uh, helping people afford electric vehicles and having charging stations for that, all of those are going to go a long way toward our climate goals. There is much more in the Build Back Better legislation, mm -hmm. and whatever uh, shape or form it finally takes, I do believe we're going to get it done. Uh, but there's a lot right now that we're working with in the bill that the president's already signed to make sure that transportation is, is a big part of the climate solution. You touched upon it. Let's talk a little bit more about mass transit, our MBTA. They are in a world of hurt. They have been before the pandemic, financially hurting even more since the pandemic. They told us earlier this month they don't anticipate getting uh, to, to financial recovery until 2028. Is there funding in the infrastructure bill to address financial deficits? First of all, uh, I would point to the funding in the American Rescue Plan, which went for exactly this purpose. You know, uh, a transit agency saw a huge blow to ridership because of COVID, and it, it's going to take years to fully recover. Uh, but yes, also there's going to be a, a whole new level of resources in the, the legislation that just passed. And it's not just about kind of maintaining the status quo. What we're really wanting to do is partner with transit agencies like the T uh, to make sure that they're ready for the future. Uh, look, the, the next 50, 100 years of transit is going to look a little different than what we had before. Uh, we're seeing more creative ways to, uh, to use light rail, to use buses, and to shore up uh, traditional uh, uh, subway and ferry systems. Uh, MBTA really covers the entire range, and so it's one of the transit agencies we're looking forward to working with with these new dollars. Let's talk about the airways for a moment here, if we can. Earlier this week, Dr. Anthony Fauci said that he believes masking is here to stay on airlines. The airlines are saying that they have made dramatic improvements in their air filtration and the masks are no longer necessary. Where do you fall on this? Well, uh, I think it's a, a both and. Uh, the masks are important, and uh, if you look closely at what the airline leaders said, they're, they're not contradicting the mask policy. Uh, but they're also rightly very proud of the, of the steps that they have taken to make sure there's good airflow in those cabins and, and to keep it safe. So what I would say is it's, it's really the combination of those two things, the masks and the other mitigations, from the way airplanes are sanitized to the air filters and more. You add those things together, and that allows us to say that air travel in the U.S., uh, as long as everybody does what they're supposed to, is a very safe way to get around. And lastly, I just want to go back to the railways, if we can, and talk about positive track control. This is something that is supposed to keep the trains on the track, be a, you know a bumper system, if we, if you would. You know, we've missed the deadline. The nation has missed the deadline several times to get this uh, implemented. Where do we stand on this, especially in a very congested Northeast corridor? 
Uh, so we've seen a, a, a lot of uh, very impressive progress in, in this uh, technology called PTC. I know it sounds technical, but very important for safety, and we're going to work with uh, everybody in continuing to uh, drive these upgrades. Look, the bottom line on anything we're doing, whether we're talking about trains and transit, or whether we're talking about our policy on, on roads, or even pedestrians getting around, the original form of transportation, we've got to make it safer in this country. We have too many roadway deaths, uh, and that's a, a top priority, and while uh, uh, both trains, transit, and air travel are uh, extremely safe among the many ways to get around. Uh, that, that's not going to continue on its own, and we've got to make them even safer. Thank you so much for your time today. I wish you a safe and happy holiday season. Thank you so much, Secretary Buttigieg. Thanks. Great being with you. Take care. You too.